there's a nationwide problem. That comes down to local government and here in Balboa Park. Its title is Deferred Maintenance. Here in the park, it's reported by Councilmember Gloria that it is in the amount of over $240 million. Once again, I make it a matter of public record that rather than adding additional maintenance structures to the park, especially unneeded ones, we need to direct the city to maintain the currently existing structures in this park, including fixing the lights. Thank you. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you, Chairman and uh, members of the Balboa Park Committee for uh, um, welcoming a presentation by us again today. Uh, my name is Rob Fitch. I am with Rick Engineering Company. We are the civil engineering and traffic engineering firm um, as a part of the Plaza de Panama team. Um, today our presentation is going to be relatively um, short. It's going to consist of two main components. Um, first off, what I'd like to start doing, uh, start off by is a, a product, project status update. Uh, I would like to go through a number of the comments that we did collect from the, uh, the committee and the public last month when we did our design review session. Uh, and workshop. Uh, I would like to do a little project uh, schedule update where the, what the status of the EIR is, um, the site development plans, as well as the plan amendments. Uh, and then the main point of our uh, presentation this evening is to do an overview of the current plan amendments that are being processed um, and reviewed by the, the city. Um, and then we'll open it up for some question and, and comment from the committee. Um, if you recall, last, uh, last month in October, uh, we came to, uh, to Balboa Park Committee to have a design workshop. We essentially had a workshop on two major components of the project. It was the Centennial Bridge component, and then we did an architectural design review of a number of the new structures that are going to be on top of the parking structure itself. Um, we received over about 25 plus different comments on the bridge design and about 30 different uh, comments on the architecture design. And I'm going to do a brief overview of those comments that we did receive. Um, we as a design team are currently reviewing all of the comments we've gotten from that workshop and previous workshops. Um, and we are reviewing those in conjunction with the uh, um, review cycle comments that we've gotten from the city of San Diego. Uh, and we have certainly evolved the design over time since our first submittal to the city, which was back in March. Um, in January, we plan to come back to you with a more comprehensive review of the design evolution um, based on the public input and Balboa Park committee comments that we received. Um, so today will just be a little bit of an overview of what we received from you last month, and then January is going to be a more comprehensive um, review of, of the design. Um, here's a sampling of some of the bridge comments, um, and what you'll see as you kind of review some of these is, is some of them conflict with each other, um, and that's something we've seen from the different city uh, reviewing departments as well. Um, you know, generally speaking, um, everybody's looking for a smaller, thinner um, profile of the bridge. We certainly agree. Um, there was a couple comments about the materials of the bridge. Um, some agreed with the concrete, but questioned the, the coloring. Um, some, some felt that maybe a steel bridge structure would be uh, a little bit more appropriate. Um, and then there were some comments about the landscaping. Uh, what was really interesting is there was a couple comments that had mixed feelings about the bicycle use. Um, if you recall, we are currently proposing two 14-foot wide lanes, which would uh, allow for bicycles and vehicles to share the lane. Um, uh, some of the conflicting comments we've gotten from the transportation department and the engineering department with the city kind of mirror this. Um, engineering came back with a, a typical roadway standard, um, which has, has a much wider roadway section. Um, and then Park and Rec came back and said, no, these are park roadway systems. They're a little, they need to be a little more uh, smaller, less obtrusive. Um, so it's been a balancing act through that regard. Um, but essentially, we do have a smaller roadway section proposed through the park. Uh, and we have submitted proper deviation forms to satisfy engineering comments, et cetera. Um, some additional, uh, additional bridge comments. Um, you know, some of the people, uh, you know, don't appreciate the, the bridge design altogether. Um, some felt that um, they like the current design um, and that, you know, some of the standards that we are designing to, um, you know, aren't applicable if it's not visible. You know, we certainly don't feel that way. Um, and, you know, 
the, the concern with the new structures in the park is they have to be differentiated from the surrounding elements but consistent with the components that make up the historic district. Um, so it's been a delicate balancing act in that regard as well. Um, and then some additional comments on the walkway widths. Uh, generally speaking, I think everybody was in agreement that the walkway around the outer radius of the bridge was appropriate. Um, they would see people wanting to walk um, along the bridge. Um, it's just a question of can we reduce the road width any further more and are we going to allow bikes? It's, it's, it's been a, a, a compromise between all the comments. Um, some of the architectural comments, and uh, you know, I apologize for this being a little bit more of an, uh, an intrusive slide to read, but um, we did receive um, some general comments about the architecture, and then I have a couple comments that specifically relate to the individual structures we are proposing. Um, there, there was a, a consensus of, of some people that had concerns about additional maintenance costs um, and what can we do to reduce those. Um, uh, generally speaking, you'll see a common theme through here that uh, the public and the Balboa Park Committee were in favor of the trellis structures that were designed um, throughout the architectural elements. Um, some preferred vines, but then they also acknowledged, well, that would increase maintenance cost. Um, so the treatment of all the buildings is, is certainly still evolving. Um, and again, the, there was, a, there was a, a feeling of expression that the architecture seemed a little too simple and they would like to have more modern contemporary components in these uh, architectural elements. Um, however, it, it goes back to the balancing act of we need to be consistent with the historic district. Um, some of the comments on the maintenance uh, facility, uh, maintenance building for Park and Rec. This is a building that is proposed where the current Oregon Pavilion restroom is. Um, this is a, a new maintenance facility that would accommodate Park and Rec's um, uh, tools and, and equipment to maintain the new parkland. Um, there was a comment, can that be located in the parking structure? Um, we, we don't know if we can necessarily comply with that um, in regards to access for Park and Rec staff. Uh, the Alcazar lot, if you recall, we proposed a little trellis valet stand, um, and I think, uh, and I think at the time we also had a restroom uh, that we were reviewing. And you can see we have conflicting comments on the need for a restroom in that area, um, and so we're continuing to evaluate the need for the restroom there and, and, and the service that that would use and provide, um, and then the valet structure as well. Uh, the Information Center, which was a structure on top of the rooftop park proposed on the southern end of the structure. Um, you can see, again, people were in, in, in a lot of favor of the trellis structure. Uh, a lot of people are looking for more glass to be built into the structures. Um, maybe some family facilities for the restrooms. Um, and then there was also a comment, can the Information Center be a little bit more mobile and less permanent? Uh, you know, that goes to the long-term goals of, of the park and where their information centers are going to be. I know they have some discussions of having some more of the mobile kio or the, the kiosks that are information centers. Um, but currently we're proposing more of a permanent structure or information center that would be uh, located on top of the parking structure. Um, then the elevator core and the shade structure. Um, you know, the first table really liked the trolla structure and the components that consisted of that elevator core. Um, you know, we had a number of tables and chairs proposed in those uh, locations. Um, another comment, they don't like the structure, too many columns, um, but they do like the circular opening of the elevator core. Uh, and then there were some comments about modernizing that component as well, um, with last and, and everything else of that nature. Um, we're also processing these architectural plans through the City of San Diego um, and the Historic Resources uh, Department. Um, and so they are also commenting on the feel and the look and the um, aesthetics of these buildings and how they comply with the district. Um, and then there was also another restroom proposed on the top of the structure, and I think we got a comment, do we have any general, neutral, or, or family restrooms? Um, and so, you know, we are currently reviewing all these comments and incorporating them into our design plans where applicable. Um, I don't have a response, a formal response to which ones we are or we are not doing right now. It's kind of a comprehensive process for ourselves. Um, but we are, we are listening and making design adjustments as, as best we can. Um, a little project schedule update. Um, just to, to take a step back and talk about the three major components we are currently processing through the city of San Diego consists of the EIR, which is the environmental impact report, and associated with the report 
our technical reports, the traffic study, the air, the noise, and all those t uh, technical reports are actually appendices within the EIR. Um, the EIR is scheduled for, the draft EIR is scheduled for public review January 11th. Um, it'll go through a, a, a couple months of public review, and then we will incorporate all the public comments into the environmental impact report, um, and then issue a final environmental document. Um, another major component of our uh, project is the site development plans. Um, those are our plan sets that are, uh, have the engineering drawings, the landscape architecture, the architecture of the parking structure and the facilities on top. Um, that has been processed and reviewed by the City of San Diego, Development Services Department, and Park and Recreation, and we have completed three full review cycles with the City since March. Um, DSD consists of engineering, transportation, fire, historic, all of the recognized departments of the City of San Diego, as well as the four recognized community planning groups, be it North Park, um, uh, Greater Golden Hill, uh, Uptown, and City Center, as well as the Balboa Park Committee. So all of these plans, um, as well as the plan amendments, have been submitted to these uh, entities for their review and comment, and we have been incorporating those cycle comments as we've gone through this process. Uh, the plan amendments is the third major component uh, that is processed through the city. Um, we are going to do an overview of what is within the plan amendments, and our third draft will be posted online in about two and a half weeks on November 22nd. Um, essentially, all three of these elements run parallel to each other through this process. In January, the site development plans have pretty much settled in on the proposed project, and the plan amendments, which reflect the proposed design, um, are, are kind of gelled in their nature, and then the environmental impact report reflects all of those components. So this is the major reservoir of all project information and all of the project alternatives that are also being fully analyzed are also in this document. Um, so, you know, as we continue through this course, all three of these will be reviewed um, and, and hopefully approved. Um, and then it will go through, uh, once the final EIR document is uh, completed, we will be going back to the planning community groups for a recommendation on the project. Uh, we, will going, we will be going to Park and Recreation for a, a recommendation, Planning Commission, and then ultimately City Council. Um, and that's kind of just charting the course of how this project has really, what it's been through since March, um, and what we're going to continue to go through into the middle of next year. Um, with that, that kind of ends my first you know, part of the presentation, just a project overview. Um, I'll introduce uh, Steve Silverman. Uh, he uh, used to be a, a planner with Rick Engineering Company, and he has been assisting us uh, with uh, the plan amendments in their entirety. Um, after his presentation, uh, we'll open it up for some question and comment from the committee and or public. So. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Steve Silverman. I was a planner with Brick Engineering. I'm still a planner. Um, and one of the areas that I focus in primarily are plan amendments. I've done several do dozen of them in the city of San Diego. I wanted to go back for a minute to this slide that Rob um, put up on the screen because I, I want to point out that everything really begins with the site development plan, because the site development plan is the process that uh, any applicant goes through with the city of San Diego for a project uh, of, of, of the nature of the changes that are being proposed for Balboa Park. And it's the details of the project itself. And I've actually brought a set of plans for the, um, the, this is the site development plan for the changes that, that are to take place in Balboa Park. There are 40 pages here. Each one of them is extremely detailed. What happens is that this gets submitted to the city. Uh, it is reviewed by various departments in the city. It uh, is available for public review. And then what happens is, I think it was after the second cycle review, um, I'm sorry, after the first cycle review by the City of San Diego of this site development plan, that we started on the process of doing the plan amendment. 
Because what has to happen is that the plan amendment follows the site development plan. The site development plan has the details of the project in it. And then the plan amendments take existing documents and amend them so that they reflect what is in the plan development, the, um, the site development application. So frequently in this process, if there are changes in the site development application as a result of the reviews by the city, there are also therefore changes in the plan amendments because the plan amendments reflect the site development permit. And all of that is reviewed in its entirely, it is in its entirety in the EIR and the technical reports. Now, um, one of the things that is uh, standard in the city of San Diego when you do a plan amendment is that you do what's called a strikeout underline version of the document. And what that means is that for any change you want to make, you go to, a, to the original plan, you strike out language that is no longer applicable, and then you add in and underline the new language that you want to have. Now, uh, it's not so easy in the case of Balboa Park, because what you can see up here is that the original Balboa Park master plan was adopted in 1989. The master plan sets out the basic policies for what's to happen in Balboa Park. So it talks about uh, land use, it talks about landscaping, it talks about maintenance and security. It, it, it's highly detailed. I'm sorry, it, it's at the third, most of it is at the 30,000 foot level because it's talking about basic park policy. And then it's been, it was amended in 1997 for the Balboa Park Activity Center it was amended again in 1998 for the Natural History Museum expansion. It was amended in April of 2004 for the Park Boulevard Promenade Project, which is generally known as the Zoo Project. And then it was amended again in 2004, September, uh, for the Veterans Memorial Garden. So there have been four amendments to the 1989 master plan. Now, there is a more detailed plan for the central mesa of Balboa Park, and that is essentially the area from uh, the west side of the Cabrillo Bridge all the way over to Park Boulevard. And the central mesa precise plan, which was adopted in 1992, is much more detailed because it gets down into the weeds. It talks about exactly what land uses should occur where, what the design should be, what the circulation element should be. So that's the far more detailed document. It too was amended. This one was, it was amended three times. It was amended in 1998 for the Natural History Museum expansion, in 2002 for the West Arcade project, and in 2004 for the zoo expansion. So it was amended three times. Now I will tell you that each one of these amendments um, was generally a strikeout underline of the existing document to show where it, it was amended, but it was never consolidated. So there is no single consolidated Balboa Park master plan, nor is there a single consolidated Central Mesa precise plan. There are, for the master plan, five separate documents. That is the four amendments and the master plan itself. And for the precise plan, there are three amendments and the precise plan itself. So it makes it a little tricky when you're doing a strikeout underline because what you have to do is go through each one of these documents and find the relevant areas that need to be changed in order to make sure that the document conforms with the, uh, the site development permit. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're doing a plan amendment of the type that's being proposed here, you're really restricted to the area of the plan amendment itself. So simply because you're doing a plan amendment, it doesn't mean, for example, that you might make some changes at an inspiration point. Even if that's to reflect an update what has happened in Inspiration Point. It's a very focused area that you're doing your plan amendment in. And essentially, what I'd like to show you 
Next are the, the character of the amendments. And I'm saying all of this because you're gonna be seeing, this is really true, this is really to prepare you for the November 22nd availability of these plan amendments where you'll get to review them. The basic type of change that happened in terms of the graphics of the plan is that the base map has changed. And this has resulted in the change of many of the maps within both the master plan and the precise plan. And this is just to give you an example of the character of the change. Because what we're showing here is the bypass road and then the reconfigured Alcazar Garden parking lot. And then there is a new road here that leads to the new parking garage. And I'd also point out, uh, although I can even barely see it, there is a um, President's Way comes in cul-de-sacs right here. Here's the new uh, parking garage and there's a cul-de-sac. So all of those base map changes have been made to every single graphic within the master plan and the precise plan so that it is brought up to date. In addition to that, there are what I'll just call some garden variety strikeout underlying changes. Now in this instance, for example, what we're saying, what we've added to the discussion of the West Prado is the Alcazar Garden parking lot will be reconfigured. So it's simply a statement that is embedded into the existing precise plan that talks about that change. It's also, there is, this is vehicular circulation to the Central Mesa via the Cabrillo Bridge, will uh, utilize a bypass road leading from, and basically once again, it continues to describe the change that is proposed as part of the site development plan. Just wanted to give you one more example of this. Here where we're talking about vehicular circulation, one of the recommendations, and, and what is neither strike, struck out nor underlined is what is in the document itself. Um, and what is in the existing document. So under recommendations, we have uh, included a new one that will say establish a two-way bypass road from Cabrillo Bridge to President's Way, separating vehicular traffic from pedestrian corridors. corridors thank you. <laughs> um, and, and so it is, and it, the intention here is really to once again describe in greater detail what is happening as part of the site development plan. Now, there are um, some other changes that are much more substantive to the plan itself. And this is an example where, as you'll see on this entire page, everything is underlined. This is a new, an entirely new addition to the precise plan. And this talks about the bypass road and the Alcazar Garden parking lot. And it talks about the details of um, this design, including uh, design the bypass road so that it connects seamlessly with the Cabrillo Bridge, provides one lane of traffic in each direction, separates pedestrian and vehicular routes, and so on. So it is, it is also creating policy that would describe what the project itself should look like. I think all of you now have introductions to both the precise plan and the master plan that were handed out as part of your packet earlier. And that really, each one of those documents, which is in the introduction to the master plan and to the precise plan, describes what it is that is happening within the, these two documents themselves and the kind of changes that are taking place so that they conform with the site development permit. Now, um, I, this is one more example of a substantive change. This is the Plaza de Panama. And so this is a brand new graphic showing the new configuration of the Plaza de Panama with two new reflecting pools and having the entire plaza turned into a pedestrian area. Again, it's one of the intentions of the site development permit, and you'll see it in the introduction to the master plan, to the, the Central Mesa 
sorry, the Central Mesa Precise Plan, and, and it will be called out as a specific new change in that document. If there are, actually, Rob, did I leave anything out? No, I think so. Um, we would invite any comments you have on these documents. Uh, actually, I'm stealing Rob's thunder. He's going to tell you that uh, it's going to be on a variety of uh, different websites, but it'll be on the Plaza de Panama website, which is plazadepanama.org on November 22nd, and that's where the full copies of the, uh, the plans would be. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, just a couple other comments to add to Steve's presentation. Um, essentially, the uh, Balboa Park Master Plan and its uh, subsequent amendments, as well as the Central Mesa Precise Plan, all of those documents, albeit separate in their nature, uh, can all be found on the Park and Rec website, um, the current documents. And one of the, uh, the difficulties in reviewing the amendments is you don't necessarily see all the original pages um, side by side. So if it's going to be a side by side comparison, which I know Park and Rec has been doing uh, extensively over the last uh, couple months, uh, all the original master plans and approved amendments are on the Park and Rec website. Um, additionally, what we provided to the committee uh, tonight was a hard copy of our PowerPoint presentation. We have been going through um, a pretty substantial update to our project website uh, and working with the uh, online collaborative. Um, I think we're about a day or so away from having that, up, that website live. Um, and then all of our previous Balboa Park Committee presentations, um, including annotation uh, on the slides, uh, will be available on that website. Um, and again, the, the plan amendments will be available in about two and a half weeks. And that is the third draft of the plan amendments. We have had two draft plan amendments cycled through the um, city departments as well as the planning community groups um, that are recognized by the city that we'll ultimately get a recommendation for. Um, uh, one other thing I'd like to note is Saturday, November 19th, we are going to be having, I believe, our third uh, walking tour of the project. They have actually been pretty successful for us over the last couple months. Um, we've had on range of anywhere from about 25 to 40 people in attendance. Um, and we start in the Plaza de California and take about an hour and a half or so uh, and walk through all the major components of the project, um, essentially just describing what's going to be going on and educating the public. Um, so I would encourage anybody that uh, still may have some questions or, or concerns about components of the project to come join us on the walking tour. Um, with that, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it over to you for any question or comments. Thank you, Rob. And thank you, Rob and Steve, very much. Um, I have a, a few comments first. Um, thank you for responding to our request to provide us with copies of your presentation. I think that's very helpful. Uh, for us, we have, uh, provided the committee, we have copies of tonight's presentation and also uh, they distributed a copy of last month's presentation. <clears throat> um, I have a copy of um, the site plans, I believe it's version 9, and uh, I have it in my office. Uh, because these are proprietary and belong to the applicant, I'm not able to copy them. But if any of you committee members would like to see them, please contact me and come by my office, spend as much time as you'd like looking at those. Um, we were given tonight an um, overview of the, and it's just sort of an overview bullet points of amendments to the master plan and precise plan. I also have copies of draft two of the plan amendments in my office, if you'd like to see those. Um, however, as, as we were told tonight, draft three should be available in less than three weeks and available online. Um, but nonetheless, if you'd like to see uh, what I have, please contact me and be happy to share those with you. Um, and I also want to mention, I hesitate to mention this because it's not, certainly not confirmed yet, um, as we were told, the, the target date for the publication of the EIR, the draft, is January 11th. We are considering, the Alba Park is, Committee is considering having a workshop in February, probably on a Saturday morning, 
um, to go over the EIR and involve the community and, and the committee rather than trying to cram it into a Thursday night and also provide another day uh, more access for the public to come and attend. I don't have a date for that. It's not set yet. We're, I just wanted to let you know we're considering that. Um, and I, I think that's my comments. Um, so I'm going to ask the committee if they have questions, comments about what we heard. David. Um, I have, this is a question about uh, the remarks that you made that you went to the community planning groups with the plan amendments. I belong to the Golden Hill Planning Group, and I have not seen the SB5. You, can you tell me what date it was? Because I haven't missed a, a meeting. Well, well, my understanding and working with the project manager uh, from the department, uh, uh, development services department, um, essentially the community planning groups that have um, uh, requested to the city to be in, in, involved in the review process um, have been made, given submittals. Um, essentially, in our two major submittals, we've been giving the city about 17, 18 copies that are disseminated. Um, and my understanding that um, the our first, our first submittal would have been uh, in March, um, and then the second submittal uh, would have been done in uh, May, and then our third submittal of the site development plans, which I believe was the second submittal of the plan amendments, um, was actually made to the city, um, let me get you a hard date here, uh, October 14th. So there should have been a package that was uh, given to your chair or a designated representative um, from the uh, Development Services Department. Uh, my, uh, you, may, you may want to double check all that because I'm on just down plan this week and we got to submit it. Okay. Well, I, I make the submittals requested from the city and, and my understanding is they are disseminated because we actually get review cycle comments back and I know we have seen them from North Park um, and the Balboa Park Committee and I think I'll, I'll check with Michelle Sokolowski in, in reference with you guys, but that is my understanding. David, so uh, oh. I have one more question I just thought of. So as far as you know, the, uh, the development plans and the plan amendments and the project itself going forward, uh, is there a timeline when all these things are going to go through the planning, through the process? Planning Commission go to the uh, full, full council for a vote. I mean, are they going to be tied together, or are they going to be separate as they pr proceed through the, the whole process? No, uh, yes, sir. There, there is a pretty well-defined process, um, and essentially, what occurs is the environmental impact report goes out to pub the draft environmental impact report goes out for public review in January. That cycles between the public and the uh, planning groups for a couple months. Um, and then those, all the public comments are reviewed and incorporated and generated into a final EIR. Um, after that time frame, then we will be going back to the recognized planning groups and communities for a formal recommendation on the project. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to the recognized planning committees, we'll go to the Balboa Park Committee, we'll also go to the Park and Rec um, Design Review Committee for recommendation and the Park and Rec Board itself. Um, and then we go to the Historic Resources Board for their recommendation on the project. So they all kind of fall in line, and this is really uh, shaping up to probably occur, um, you know, April and May and June of all next year. Um, and then after all of the uh, city departments, be it HRB, Park and Rec, and the community groups, there'll be a staff report that is compiled by the City of San Diego, and then that is presented to the Planning Commission for a recommendation, and then the next and final step in that process is City Council. Um, and so we're looking at the middle of next year for City Council. You're talking about a package altogether. So this is all the, the package that I just mentioned to you. Uh, you know, the, the plan amendments and the development plans uh, for this project will all go hand in hand after the EIR is certified. Yeah, ex well, actually, the, when the EIR goes out for public review, this whole package is kind of lumped in that for the public review component. And then it, it all, yes, in short, you're, the whole package carries through the process um, at this time. And if at the end of the uh, um, decision makers um, there is a, a, a change in the project, uh, we would be expected to come back and revisit the site development plans any concurrent uh, components of the environmental impact report, as well as reamend the amendments to reflect the project that was approved. 
Um, so all of these are pretty, you know, they're, they're dynamic up until the, the public review component, then they become static for while it's out for review, but ultimately at the end it depends on the decision makers, um, and then documents would need to reflect what the decision makers' final decision is, um, shall the project proceed. Questions from the committee? Jason. Um, yeah, I'd just like to um, make a quick announcement that the Center City Advisory Committee, uh, CCAC, uh, will be hearing this as an action item uh, next week at 5.15 p.m. in the CCDC boardroom, uh, which is at, uh, located at 401 B Street. So I just want everyone to know that that uh, will be occurring next week. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, suggestions from the committee? Okay, it feels like I'm missing something, but I don't know what, what that would be. Um, thank you again for coming and thanks thank you. For, the, uh, for the documents. Um, we do have public comment. On I'm the back here. We do have uh, two, and it looks like we may have a third. <laughs> um, we'll start with uh, Bruce Coons, followed by Jarvis Ross, and uh, you'll each have two minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee and uh, staff and uh, public. Uh, Bruce Coons, Executive Director of uh, Saber Heritage Organization. It's clear to me after listening to the presentation, which I thought was a very fine presentation, that these are massive plan amendments that affect many parts of the park. And the plan amendment process seems inadequate for this type of activity, especially when we're dealing with a uh, plan that's 22 years old and something this massive, I think the only appropriate and the only way to actually do this right is to do a comprehensive plan update. And we should start that process now. There's no way that the plan amendment process was meant to take care of this big a change to the plan. It virtually throws out the original plan and institutes a new plan. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Chairman Kenny and committee members, we repeatedly have had Civitas make a solo presentation known as the Jacobs Plan. Its variations have only been around the theme that includes a bypass bridge and an underground parking garage. At the city council meeting, of which some of us at were attended that, uh, it was stated there that with regard to authorizing the MOU, it was specifically directed that all plans be considered. All plans be considered. The ensuing reports by Civitas have been in direct violation of the City Council's directions. The only thing they really have done is present the bypass bridge and the parking garage. The rest of it, of the Jacobs plan, I think everybody agreed with, and that was uh, vacating uh, the parking in the uh, plaza. Uh, there are several other things. I'm, I'm happy that two other gentlemen spoke about, uh, about their planning boards. Our planning board, Peninsula Community Planning Board, was never contacted about having a presentation there. We made a request, and I would apprise you that uh, on November 20th at the uh, Hervey Library, uh, there's, they are going to be making a presentation there along with some other parties that have plans. And I would encourage any of you that might have the opportunity to attend that to please join us there. That means it's at 6.30 on November 20th. Uh, important. The main thing I think that's objected to, I think by many people, that I, the meetings I've attended all across the city on this, and that is the bypass bridge does not conform with the Department of Interior's standards for historical preservation. We talk on one hand about restoring the plaza. They show pictures of it when, when there were just people there. They didn't show it the six occasions that I've documented that there were automobiles there. I just encourage you to research this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and next we'll have Ms. Carlson. Uh, 
Um, hi. The first comment I'd like to make is um, that most planning committees are dark in December, for the members of the public who don't know that. So these plan amendments are coming out on November the 22nd. Um, we won't have any planning meetings in December at which to review them, and the EIR is coming out in January. So this timing is quite interesting. Um, next, I'd like to talk about um, perhaps and I think this is important for the members of the general public who don't go to the planning committee meetings to understand, is that um, we've been asking for these plans and these plan amendments in electronic form. So when the chair of the planning committee gets one copy of a 70-page plan amendment document, and we are all a volunteer organization, so you should know we don't have any budget to copy these plans. Um, what do you do? So do you, you then have to scan 70 pages to electronically send them to all the members of your committee? Because do you see any of these planning group members reading a 70-page document during this one or two-hour meeting? I don't think so. Um, we recently then, um, at our, the planning committee in which I volunteer, we asked for these documents electronically and they were not forthcoming. So then we made um, motions asking for these documents electronically, and they were not forthcoming. And then we received a letter from DSD saying that we may not copy these documents because they are covered by copyright law. <laughs> and so we may not um, scan them and distribute them electronically. We may not copy them and hand them out. Um, this directly conflicts with the public's right to know this information, have access to this information, see these plans, understand what this project is. So when you're hearing questions from the board about um, you didn't get this at your planning committee, well, your planning committee chair can't copy any of these documents to give to you. <laughs> and that's very generous of you to have people, Mr. Chairman, come to your office to look at these documents. But most of us live in an electronic world, and these things should be available publicly. They should be online, they should be available to every single member of the public to read and see and understand. I'm sorry this is my hobby horse, but I am so excessively angry about this, I can barely stop the expletives coming out of my mouth. Um, I'm sorry, you, your time is running. <laughs> thank you very much, I appreciate it. <laughs> Chairman, could I make one correction? That meeting at the Institute Planning Board, I didn't understand, was moved to the 17th. Um, and it's my understanding the plan amendments will be, the third draft will be available on November 22nd and they will be available online. So all of you will have access to those. Um, <clears throat> not the plans themselves, but the, the plan amendments will be available. Uh, any other comments on Plaza de Panama for this month? Okay. Um, I, something I neglected to mention on my report earlier is right now it looks like we will uh, not be having a meeting in December. Our meeting is scheduled for the Thursday before December night, <coughs> begins on Friday, which means that entire parking lot will be uh, uh, inaccessible for parking, um, even difficult to walk through. Um, parking rec staff <coughs> has to be here long days, Friday and Saturday, it's a, a strain on them to be here in December as well. So um, <clears throat> that's not official yet, but it looks like we will not be having a meeting in December. Um, and that is why we heard from Rob that they'll be coming back in January to give us the feedback on the most recent um, workshops that we've had. Um, 